Hi folks, it's Nick here from Nick's News and Reviews and now we're looking, as you probably can tell, and we're loading up Stunt Car Racer by MicroStyle on the ZX Spectrum released in 1989, uh, originally written by Jeff Crammond but this conversion is done by uh, Pete Cook. Now this game is a highly ambitious project to take on for the ZX Spectrum so I was always interested to see how this one would look. I originally played it on the Commodore Amiga I played it with a friend once, he had a Spectrum still. He said to me um, he liked the game so he bought it on the Spectrum. When I asked him what was it like the next day, he said it was a bit pooey. Well, uh, intrigued, I went and bought it myself and I was pleasantly surprised. This is how conversions should be done. Absolutely amazing conversion this, which you'll see. I don't know how they've done it. Also come out on the Amstrad CPC and the Commodore 64, as I put my uh, name in here. So there's the tracks. Um, you don't see a picture of the people you're racing against. There's four different divisions, each with two tracks. You compete in a league. You become top of the league after racing each opponent on each of the tracks. You get promoted. So let's jump in, go straight into the start of the season. Um, I'm versus Jumping Jack. Now, I was really impressed with this game. It's probably um, my favourite racing game on the Spectrum now. But the one I was most impressed about is the recreation of the tracks. Um, if you played the Amiga version and hadn't played this at all, you can immediately jump onto this because the straights are exactly the same distance, the bends are exactly the same on every track. Absolutely amazing. Now how did they program this on the Spectrum? I do not know. There's four different colours they use for tracks. Yellow, cyan, which is like blue of course, if you're a Spectrum you know this. Yellow and green. Right, so, we're, um, by pressing fire we increase our boost and our speed. My opponent is right in front of me. Right, we're on lap one, it says in the bottom left. Boost's 31 left. Uh, the plus figure is the meters my opponent is ahead or behind me. Right, the time ticks up. But yes, I'm extremely impressed with this. I can't believe it's on a Spectrum. How have they done this? Right, I'll try and show you all of the tracks as I did in the Amiga review. So if you haven't already, have a look at the Amiga version I reviewed on this channel. And compare the two together. But um, the feel of the car as well, it's bouncing about, which you'd expect. It's not all flat. The curvature, the up the updates of the track as well. The draw rate's quite good. I'd love to see the programming of this. How have they done this? I am in, in awe. So Pete Cook, who programmed this, and Jeff Cameron who did the original, hats off to you. This one is an absolute beauty. Not as fast as the Amiga version, but you wouldn't expect it to. On the straight here, so you recognise the tracks, of course, if you played the original one. So about 263 metres in the lead and increasing over Jumping Jack. I think it's a formality really. We've got this one. But the idea of the game was if you completed all four divisions and you ended the tracks again but you was in a sort of like a super league where the cars got extra speed. Which is more of a hindrance really because there's a set speed to go over all these jumps. So you can make it. Extra speed is not really going to help you. Maybe on the straights, but um, yes. As you can guess, you've got to um, stay on this narrow track and not fall off. For any bumps or falls, you take damage, which is uh, represented by that crack going across the top of the uh, the framework there. Uh, i say it's about 10% through, isn't it? But the tracks get progressively more difficult or more varied as you go up the divisions, and so the potential to create damage is increased. Engine noise is a little bit flat, but I've done the best they could with it. It's, it's enough to um, indicate noise. Hopefully you can just about hear it over this commentary volume. But yes, the, um, the skill of the opponents is actually recreated as well. Definitely feels like the same game, and that's all you need with conversions really. It's definitely Stunt Car Racer. made that jump quite easily. So each um, race consists of three laps. You can also do practice mode as well, and not against an opponent, which is probably what I'm going to opt for to show you all the tracks to see how they compare. 
good play. So it's like not like a Sunday drive. This not a problem, not a problem at all. Sky, well, a mixture of white and black dots, but it sort of like gets the message across. Brilliant. I'm coming round. 49.17 is our best lap so far. Can we beat that? Do, 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 do. Race one. Brilliant. Yeah, I've got no bad things to say about this game, really. As I deliberately drive off the track to show you what that looks like. Press fire. Also, no um, race victory sequence either. The Amiga version, you got a nice little picture. But there's the league so far. Get three points for a, two points for a win, one point for fastest lap. The humpback. And this track is green, as you can tell. So I like it how they um, they decided to have different colours at least. They try, chose the lighter colours. Green's probably the darkest of the ones. Other colours they've ignored was the dark blue, which probably would have clashed with a cockpit. Red, which would have been a bit hard on the eyes, made it feel like you're driving around Mars, which wouldn't have been a bad thing. I like Mars. Um, black, that would have been a disaster. And magenta which uh, Spectrum people only know that colour, everyone else knows it as purple. So those colours were avoided. I don't think I could have driven around a purple track. But the, the colours keep it interesting, feels a bit different. Right, opponent's gone off again. There's the humpback bit of the track. Hopefully in the next lap along we'll uh, get some speed up to get over this a bit better. Your opponent can knock you off the track. Although, um, although I've tried many a times, it's, I don't think you can knock him off the track. Seems a bit unfair. But it's all about um, finding the right place to overtake so you don't get knocked off the track and go flying to your death. Accelerate at this jump, this might be a chance to do it. We're not getting past him, are we? It's 11, 10 metres. Whoops, that isn't very good. Took a bit of damage. Yes, I uh, took that one at the wrong speed, but we're still... Um, Still behind our opponent, so let's bide our time. I'm going to get you jumping, Jack. Right. Hmm. There must be a straight coming up, I think. But look, you can tell look, the way the car's bouncing, that really adds a bit of authenticity. Draw rate's a little slow on some of these bends, but you can get away with it. Look, this is all right here. Right, we think we've got him on the inside, or have we come off the track? You can feel it, can't you? If you're watching this close, you can actually feel that you're in the car. I don't think any other Spectrum game would manage to do this. This is like witchcraft. Best Spectrum game for driving. Do you agree? Do you not agree? Comment below if you know a better one. There are a few racing games, but how can anything be better than this? That's your challenge. If you agree, comment below. If you play this, comment below. Obviously, rate and subscribe. It helps me a great deal. Makes it worthwhile, anyway. So what we're on? We're on lap two. We've got plenty of boosts left. We've got a lead of over 250 metres. I think this one's in the can, boys and girls. Sky looks uh, made up this time of black and green dots probably a million pokes involved in this game. Keep going. Yes. Would well, nice to see some crowd cheering, but now I'm taking the mick. I think the uh, Spectrum is uh, at its full capacity here. I think put anything else on it, it's probably going to blow up into a million pieces. Coming up to the end of lap two, taking that bend there. I mean, the secret when you're going around the bend is just concentrate, just concentrate on staying in the middle of the track, or turning gradually with the bend. Focus on what's in front of you, and you pretty much stay on. Anyone that's ever had this game on any format at the start spends the first uh, quarter of an hour just crashing off, or doing corners at the wrong speed, or jumping out of the track. Um, I've sort of like, uh, this game's been engraved on my mind really. So playing the Amiga version mainly, when I went on to this, I pretty much knew the track straight away. Such was the quality of the conversion. 
But yep, the other tracks in the other leagues, you've got Division 3, the Big Ramp and the Stepping Stones. Big Ramp, you'll be surprised to hear, consists of a Big Ramp. Stepping Stones, well, there's a series of platforms, you have to hit the right speed, about 140 miles an hour, I think, to get across. Division 2, the roller coaster, quite a long track, but lots of ups and downs, and the high jump. A bit like the big ramp concept, but there's a, a big needle thing to jump in the middle, so if you get that wrong, you can smash headlong into it, which is probably not a good thing to do. And Division 1, you've got the drawbridge, where there's this ramp that goes up and down continuously, so you've got to time that, um, well, depending if it's steep or shallow, depends what speed you go up, as I win the race quite easily. And also the ski jump, which is pretty good. Includes a massive sort of like jump, really. Looks a bit like a ski jump, funnily enough. So it's aptly named. So that's two races won. We're probably going to win this division. Let's see how it works out. Race winner, Nick. So we've got six points. Roadhog's also got six points. And that's all that's available for the next two races. So as long as I get at least one fastest lap, I should win. The little ramp again. Do you recognise it? If you don't, then you've got extremely poor memory. Here we go. On the Amiga version, um, someone did, which I've also uploaded without any commentary, which I'll, I'll soon fix that, I guess. Um, Stunt Car Racer, uh, the new tracks. Gave you uh, eight different tracks to race, more longevity of the game. Don't think they've done this with the um, Spectrum version. Let's make life interesting. Let's give him a bit of a lead. Right. I think we might have given him too much of a lead. He's 500 metres ahead. But yeah, we'll just create a bit of a clear track for us. Try and get the fastest lap. And that should be enough to get to uh, win the league. We won't compete in the league in all four divisions. But certainly, um, on practice mode after this, I'll show you all the tracks. So you can see the whole of the game. Right, what is he? He's getting on for 700 metres almost, but uh, we're cutting him back slightly. Easily does it. Easily does it. Would you like to do this in real life? I think the answer is no. Well, the answer might be yes. You might be a maniac. If you've done anything like this in real life, comment below. And everyone can say that you're lying. But comment below anyway. Comments are good, no matter what they're about. Good or bad. Insane. Whatever. I'll probably answer them. Unless there's some sort of bug. Sometimes if you haven't got a Google account, or Google Plus that's linked to this, it makes it impossible to comment back. So I'm not being rude. It's just a technicality. But uh, as time goes on, those accounts will be less and less. Right, so let's uh, blast it round, try and get the lap time. I doubt we, we might even catch him up actually, we, um, he was 700 metres ahead, now it's down to, well, just over 300, below 300. I can actually see him in the distance there. Woo. So the uh, Spectrum certainly did come along with the advancements of its games since the early 80s. This one is 1989, so coming to the end of the Steadex Spectrum's reign, really, well, commercially, people are still making homebrew games. Who knows? I might review a homebrew game at some stage. Maybe if you've got a homebrew game you want me to have a look at, that might happen. You never know. I think there's a lot of Jet Set Willy uh, clones. I doubt there's going to be any homebrews like this, though. Well, correct, again, if you correct me if I'm wrong, if someone has managed to program some more tracks for this game, then that would be the ultimate, and I'll certainly review that if that's the case. But um, I doubt it. I won't hold my breath. Always good advice. Unless you're underwater. Right, on a straight. Can we get past this fellow on the last lap? I think we can, you know. He's got square wheels. But um, that's not a criticism because the wheels look pretty square on the Amiga versions as well. 
I don't think there was a PlayStation version or an Xbox version. But if they did make one, this game on the PlayStation 4 or any of the modern day consoles will look absolutely fantastic. You might be uh, watching this about six years after I've uploaded and there might be a different console on the market. A virtual, a virtual stunt car racer might be available. That would be absolutely awesome. So yes, whenever a game that's got Jeff Crammon's name on it somewhere, pretty much awesomeness ensues. He can be trusted. Mike Pro's Formula One racing was another gem of his. Yay, we win the race and we crash. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. Well, we didn't really intend to win that one, just wanted the fastest lap, but that's uh, good enough. Nine points. We can do anything here. We could die immediately. Oh, actually, I think I've calculated this wrong. If he gets the fastest lap and race, I think he'll have nine points as well, will he not? Because we all we both fresh jumping jack. So that was a misjudgment of me, and luckily it's worked out. So on this occasion, I really just do need the fastest lap, and then we're there. Speedometer can go up to 34, it seems. The only way to do that, I think, might be to win Division 1, then compete in the Super League going forward. But uh, with the ZX Spectrum, I, there's no save feature. You can't save a game halfway round. Whoops, that's a bit bad. You can't save a game halfway round with the ZX Spectrum. It's either all or nothing. As so I like Carl Groove into the bottom of my car. So you don't have to do it in one sitting, I'm afraid. No, uh, yeah, no disc saving or memory sticks or cards you can put in. So that's a bit of an ask, and the ZX Spectrum tended to get hot quite quickly. If you was playing it for anything over half an hour and touched it, it, it you could probably uh, turn it around and iron your trousers with it. Stayed on the track well, sort of, do I? Yes. So I just beat this chump, Roadhog. He's a bit of a granddad. Bit slow. Woo! I've done that wrong. Whoops. Ooh, dearie me. Woo! Don't get seasick, folks. This is just me and my normal driving. Rudy, we've got about 30 metres on him. That green flag next door indicates I'm in the lead. Time ticking up accurately, second by second. Yeah, but if he's doing this twice as quick, I I think it'd be impossible. So what's it going to be? Doing this bend on about 170 or 17, as it says, so you can do it twice as quick. I don't. I think the the spectrum will explode if that's the case. Kaboom! Kaboom! Right here we go. Hump back so we can get a bit of air on it. Oh, that's a bit too much air, is it? bit too much air. Well done. See the draw rate there is fractionally slow. Oh, I don't like the look at that crack. Look at it. It's over halfway across the uh, top of the screen. We're only on lap two. Yes, but I think as long as we finish this lap, I think it'll give us a lap time that uh, Roadhog is not going to be able to beat. Go, go, go. Give it a bit of boost there. So not a choice of views on this. Would like be an interesting game to do. Just control it by a rear view. That would have been very slippery. But this game is crying out for a remake. Someone, please remake it. When I say remake it, I mean a decent remake that actually feels like the original game, but it's graphically superior. Woohoo! So, I think we're coming up to the end of lap... Well, we're on lap 3 now. Didn't say that quick enough. Lap 2 ended, lap 3 starts. It's a bit touch and go when we're going to get all the way around here. That crack that goes all the way across the car becomes a wreck. Or well, massive high upon that. How much damage we're going to take that? A little bit, a little bit. Got to be a bit careful with it. We're over a kilometre in the lead. That's a disaster for the Roadhog. How embarrassing. He's being beaten by a whole kilometre. 
and we're only doing three laps. Oh, that's bad. Oof. We're quite close to calamity here, folks, but we should have the fastest lap. But sometimes with this game, I know, if it ends because I'm on a wreck, when it does the summary, suddenly your computer opponent has the fastest lap as well, which you suspect has been pretty much impossible. Right, we're almost out of boost, so we've given it good O round here. Boost one. Gonna go to yep, yeah, boost zero. It's only quite take a bit of damage. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. Have I mucked up right at the end? I'm right near the finish. The computer's been kind to me. He hasn't given me much damage on that. Oh my God, we're gonna lose, are we? He's 800 meters, 750 meters. I ain't got any boost to accelerate this. This is going to be close. Oh, excitement here at the end. 4.15, 3.50, 2.78. I think we're going to be just about okay, I think. Where's the finish line? I think it's there. Yes. What was you worried about? We won. We're about just under 150 metres. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Let's get a view of how we did in the championship. 12 points maximum. What do you expect? Jumping Jack Poor, Roadhog middle of the road and me. Brilliant promotion for Nick. So normally we would have gone to the next division then but that's going to take too long. So uh, I think we're going to have a look at all the tracks here for you. Max Boo's High Flyer would have been my next opponent's. High Flyer is a woman. Max Boost looks a bit like Bruce Forsyth. Right, here we go. The stepping stones. Let's do a lap of each track. This track's white, which always reminds you of the snow. And if there's uh, one uh, weather conditions you don't want to be in this in, it's snow. As you hit some ice, you'd be doomed. But it does feel different um, having the four different colours there. So we'll drive around. Which is always good in driving games, that's pretty good commentary right there. We we'll drive around until we hit the stepping stones, which is the only tricky bit of this track. Slightly more tricky than the first two, the little ramp and the humpback. I think this is it. Right, here we go. We need about just 140, I think, or else we're doomed. That's the first stepping stone on. Ooh, second one. Uh, yep. If you fall between the cracks, of course, you're stuck there, and that's pretty much the end of the game. So. First time successfully navigated. Um, quite an interesting, takes a while to master uh, this track once you know the speeds to do. Pretty much plain sailing. Uh, your opponents in the division get slightly quicker each time, so uh, going over those stepping stones um, with an opponent uh, right behind you makes it a little bit tricky. They can bash you sideways. There we go, so that's one lap of stepping stones. Fairly uh, slightly more tricky. Now this is cyan in colour. Maybe it's later at night. It's the big ramp. Now this is really well programmed. We've got slight bumps each time, each side of this straight, which causes the car to flip um, right or left. I, as I say, I'm in awe of the programming of this game. Its its similarities to the original tracks of the Amiga is uncanny. This isn't the big ramp. This is just some little ramps to get you started. Now, the big ramp is around this corner. You really have to build up a, quite a bit of speed. Which I seem to have been having a problem with my boosts. It needs to be in the 200 area. If we go up this massive ramp here, a big ramp, and I'm not going quick enough. This could all end in tears. Yeah, I'm not going quick enough. Right, there's the other side. I'm a bit low. Kaboof! Taking a massive hole in the, in the um, framework. But I think the rebound's been nice, and I have, somehow I have made it across. Um, that was extremely lucky. The racing gods and fate were with me there. Sky not made out of dots this time, just black lines. So whether that's uh, a key to how they're programmed it, I do not know. Take from that what you will, programmers. There's probably a reason there. Yeah, but that, the feeling you're going across there. So that is uh, a big ramp. Next we go to Division 2, the roller coaster, back in yellow in colour. Quite a long track this, you can imagine it being a roller coaster. 
Hang on to your hats. As I try and get a bit of speed up here. And try not to fall off the track as well. May have taken that a bit quick. See, that's the main thing. I almost jumped off the track there. Quite a tight bend. Uh, you can get some good speed up around the roller coaster. But I spent, seem to be spending most of my time in midair. Where the hell am I? Whoops, got away with that as well. Lots of ups and downs. So a metaphor for life, really. I'm sure that's what the programmers had in mind. Or maybe they were just trying to make it reminiscent of a roller coaster. Take your choice. I know which one probably it is. Get some speed up. Doing well, doing well. So the roller coaster gives you a lot of boost, this one, as you can see. Still got 70 left. Very long lap. Probably the longest lap in the game, this one. Feel free to sing Roller Coaster, that song. Roller coaster. No, I won't. I won't uh, infect you with my singing. That would be unfair. I mean, if you made it to this long in the video, you're doing you're doing quite well. If you have, comment below with a with a, a fact about roller coasters that no one else knows about. Or maybe a made up, maybe a made up fact about roller coasters. Any facts about this game? I'd like to hear from you. Anything about anything? I, I'm not desperate for comments, of course, but uh, yes, I am. Just show evidence that you've been here. So that was one lap of the roller coaster, 1 minute 25. Next up is the high jump. Hopefully we don't have a calamity as bad as we did in the big ramp. Because if we do, I'm pretty much dead. Just trying to remember whereabouts the high jump bit is. It's here. There's the pin. Well, that was a bit of luck, so we're over that. Good. So the high jump bit's right at the start of the lap, which we uh, got over quite easily. What was you worried about? Nothing. Uh, a very interesting concept, this game. I'm trying to think of similar games to it. Can't think of anything. Did anyone try and rip this game off? Try and come up with something similar? I know in games like uh, Jet Set Willy, there was lots of, sort of similar things going on. An attic attack in most particular. Set a whole genre, that game, attic attack. So we've done the high jump quite easily. The rest of the um, track, um, the, well, this is the only other tricky bit. You've got to get this right because this part of the track is at an angle, it's at a slant. Hopefully you can make that out. Take it wrong, you'll clean off. So an interesting one, the high jump. When you're racing an opponent, that bit of the track is particularly difficult. But how about this for 8-bit graphics? Couldn't find a better example anywhere else. The drawbridge. Now this is another bit of um, fantastic programming because the drawbridge goes up and down. Here it is. Can you see it going up and down? You can. I think you can. Going a bit steep so we've got to control the speed here. As soon as you're onto it the drawbridge stops and you're stuck with that angle. You just have to judge your speed based on that. Did I judge it correctly? Well, just about. Didn't have any more uh, inches to spare colour of the track is called Cyan C-Y-A-N of course it is so MicroStyle um, produced this game later come MicroProse I believe whoops good old Jeff Hammond and well done uh, Pete Cook and that isn't the Peter Cook that was with Dudley Moore if you remember those two how did this game look on the Commodore 64? I'm quite intrigued. I mean, the, it's Commodore, like the Commodore Amiga version was, so it should be similar, I would have thought. Is it different coloured tracks? Let me know. How did they approach it? It probably had mixed colours. Spectrum, it's all got to be the same colour, I think. The track itself, although they did amazing with the um, cockpit here, not sure about that steering wheel, that can probably be lost. gives you more boosts in the more advanced uh, tracks as it's doing here as you saw in the roller coaster also a few bumps but uh, yes the drawbridge is the main thing of this a very tricky track well the drawbridge bit is anyway 
speed maintains quite good, doesn't it? The frame rate, it doesn't fluctuate. I'm giving this game, um, I'm scoring it 11 out of 10. Pretty useful stuff. Could play this for hours. And finally, the last track is the Ski Jump. Aptly, it's coloured white. Now this is a very interesting track. The favourite bit is the actual Ski Jump part. Unsurprisingly, let's uh, safely navigate round here without falling off. When we get to the Ski Jump, we have to get the maximum speed to land on a, a safer platform. Doesn't help that it's been snowing. There we go, perfecto. Now it's a ski jump bit round here. Struggling to remember. Oh, that was close. Yeah, this is the ski jump bit, so I need maximum speed. Let's get off this ramp. Right, rare born. Let's see uh, if the ground comes into play. Look at that. Perfect, land on a slight down bit. Minimal damage. Oh yes, I'm the best driver that ever lived. Uh, maybe not. Good, good, good. So, um, we're coming near the end of the lap here. Just a few more straights and bends to go, and that'll probably be the end of the review. Just go around here. Yes, yeah, so I hope you've uh, enjoyed that, and um, it's been Stunt Car Racer on the ZX Spectrum as we run out of footage. Until next time, goodbye. Goodbye.